my brothers and sisters and my beloved confreres a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the 17th sunday of the liturgical year journeying with luke the evangelist during the past few weeks we were just seeing how jesus was teaching his disciples through various miracles and interactions how they should become more compassionate to fellow beings and understand jesus as their master and their lord today we are entering into a new vista of a relationship that jesus is proposing before his disciples jesus now is on his way towards jerusalem as he is ascending jerusalem before he ascends to his father he tells his disciples how they should pray to his father the gospel of the day begins with that statement jesus was praying at a certain place yes the evangelist is very keen to present jesus as a man of prayer the place here is not the concern at a certain place he was praying but he was in intimate relationship with his father one of the most dynamic aspects of the person of christ is his intimacy with his father time and again before a miracle and even after a miracle when he enters into a special ministry or entrusting his disciples with a responsibility jesus always lifted up his hands towards god and prayed he always showed that dependence that he has on his father this is one of the most cherishable moments that we have in the person of christ perhaps today this culture of prayer has diminished even among the christians very often we hear the lady telling priests and religious please pray for us of course knowing very well the consecrated people are set apart for that relationship with god and their prayer has got a special effect but can any christian stop praying prayer is the breath of our human lifestyle our patron saint francis de sales beautifully narrates in that very special spiritual classic treatise on the love of god the picture of a child who is hanging on the finger of his father naturally the finger is not the most strong place or the area of a human being's body but the confidence of the child that the small finger of my father is sufficient for me to hang on and i will be protected that confidence is the one which is emerging from the person of christ today as he is praying at a certain place yes there is this beautiful maxim which says the distance between your problem and its solution is the distance between your knee and the floor the more you pray the more you understand the meaning of your life jesus was praying at a certain place yes his very act of praying has evoked a sense of curiosity and desire of prayer in the life of his disciples therefore they come and tell him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples to pray in fact they are not saying teach us that same prayer that john taught his disciples to pray but like john did in his life with his disciples you must also teach us to pray and there develops one of the greatest prayers the world has ever heard the abba prayer calling god as father luke the evangelist is the only evangelist who narrates this prayer of jesus the abba prayer 
so long and descriptively. He gives a lot of emphasis on this aspect of prayer. The first part of this prayer is regarding the right of God to be praised and worshipped. And the second part addresses some of the basic human needs. Let's just take that first part of this Abba prayer. Jesus tells his disciples, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I was so enchanted when I read this passage today in a renewed manner. Our Father. There is no one ever in the world until today who has called God as Father other than Jesus Christ. He calls his God as his Father. The relationship that he enjoys therein is such an intimate one. And this distinctive relationship that Jesus possesses in his life is vividly shown from his childhood onwards. As he was found missing, naturally for Joseph and Mary, and when he was found later in the temple, Mary asked in her curiosity, My son, why did you do this to me and to your father? We were searching for you. And the answer of Jesus, Don't you know that I must be in my father's house? The relationship that Jesus developed in his personal life, that God is his father, is the greatest aspect of his communication of the kingdom message to his people. In every situation of my life, whether I am joyful or not, whether I am successful or not, whether I am clever or not, the awareness that there is a father who is waiting for me to receive me in every situation of my life gives me a lot of satisfaction. It is an expression of intimacy. It is an expression of the depth of relationship. It is a commitment in itself. Call your God as Father. Yes, my sisters, my brothers, this is an invitation for each one of us. It is not only about God as Father. In human relationship, the depth and the quality of a relationship increases when there is quality in commitment. Jesus realizes there isn't anyone in the world who can be depended on as much as on his father. And this invitation to call God as father is a welcome message for us to check the quality of our relationship with God and equally with one another. A second aspect of this Abba prayer where we speak about the right of God is where Jesus is teaching his disciples, telling them, pray, hallowed be thy name. It is not that God is not holy or God needs to be made holy. He is holy. His name is always hallowed. And that's exactly what God says Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3. The place where you stand is holy because I am present there. But what Jesus is teaching his disciples is this. Be aware, you need to time and again praise your God. Make his name known to others by your word and by your deed. This is exactly the concept that we need to understand. Very often, our prayer is mere petition. We come to God to place before him a list of our needs and our concerns. But very rarely we think in terms of hallowing God's name. I believe today, at this age of my life, the greatest prayer in every dire situation of my life is merely to say, God, my Father, your name be praised. Praising God is prayer. And when I praise God and hallow his name, he knows who I am and what I am in need of. And the third dimension is thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God is not a space. 
That's precisely the reason Jesus says, the kingdom of God is within you. It's like a mustard seed, so small as that. But you can develop this kingdom and make it a shrub where the birds of the air can have their nest built. Yes, my brothers and sisters, kingdom is an attitude. An attitude that I develop regarding God, my relationship with one another, and my commitment towards God's glory. Today, when Jesus is teaching us to pray through his own personal example and inviting us to these three-dimensional rights of God, calling God as Father and calling his name as hallowed and asking God to send his kingdom into existence in our life today. Let's make the kingdom of God developed in and through our Abba prayer and recognize God is my Father. Amen.